The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour, and I come in on the third hour. First hour, you have Steve Rhodes. Great show. Second hour, you have Steve Rhodes today because Tom's on vacation. And another great show, and I'm going to do my very best here. I've got a lot to discuss, so we'll get straight onto it because straight after my show, after the one hour, comes Larry Pesavento. And uh, I have to congratulate Larry on talking about the TBT as, as his trade for the year, and certainly that TBT, that's the opposite of the TLT, the 20 year T bond uh, fund, Lehman T bond fund, and that is uh, T TLT, that is the bonds right now really taking a beating, and uh, the TBT is soaring. Good good call. So, um, and then let's see, and this afternoon, being Wednesday, we'll have Dave White, another fabulous show, and two to four will be shared between participants here at TFNN. Oh, I'll be doing the 4 o'clock show tomorrow, Thursday, so I'll be doing uh, my show at um, 4 o'clock, Tom O'Brien, uh, Tom O'Brien show that is at four o'clock tomorrow. It'll be my pleasure and honor to do it. Now, just a real couple of quick things. Um, it's interesting that this is the, uh, the uh, this is the day of the anniversary, 1794. Eli Whitney received a patent for his cotton gin, an invention that revolutionized America's cotton industry. There was a great book once. I have it somewhere. It's called "The Six Drinks That Changed the World," and it goes over the centuries. You know how different. Uh, products uh, like wines, etc., or beers, uh, really produce, and then, of course, Coke for the 20th century, uh, produce a particular economy in a particular uh, um, sector of the, uh, of the world. Now, um, something else. In 1885, on the day, Gilbert and Sullivan, the comic opera, the Mikado premiered in the Savoy Theatre. I mean, Gilbert and Sullivan were just great musical writers. Now, this is the one I really want to talk about. 1900, Congress ratified the Gold Standard Act. Isn't that interesting? A hundred years later, we're still talking about gold. You know, some things, the faces, places, and uh, names might change. But sometimes not even the names, but the faces and places may change. But the, uh, the concepts are always uh, there. And in 1923, President Harding became the first chief executive to file an income tax report. 19th, this day in 1932, photography pioneer George Eastman, founded, founder of Eastman Kodak, died um, <clears throat> by his own hand. I didn't see that. At 77 in Rochester, New York. So uh, just I thought an interesting uh, series of events. Now. Let's look at what's going on here. For my subscribers in my opening call, I discuss a number of things. I have this these five this five picture view within one frame of the 120 minute Dow chart, the 120 minute volatility index VIX chart. Um, uh, Arms uh, Richard Arms uh, fabulous trend indicator. I say fabulous. Uh, I haven't disagreed a lot with the way he uses it, but he he invented it. I have a different way of using it. Um, and then there's the Dow Daily Chart, and then there's the S&P. And there are no very few technical indicators. In fact, there are no technical ind indicators. Yet I just noticed there's a 200-period moving average right on the 120-minute chart where it stopped at 12,000. 7.35 on the 6th of March, and that was the takeoff point in the left side, right side price time match. So I discuss in great detail, I give all the resistance points, I give exactly what I'm looking at, and I say this is pretty much what we'd be looking at during the day, uh, intraday. I talk about the short term, the intermediate term, even the longer term in my overview. I also discuss what technical tools we'll be using. I discuss the volatility index. I'll talk about that in a moment. I have developed my own indicator for the for the trend, the short term trading index. It's got a really high success rate up in the the, the ninety percent or more area, and uh, it gave me a signal yesterday that said, whenever this particular um, price area is is um, hit intraday, it's only intraday, doesn't matter where it closes. 
the following day should see, no matter how strong that day is, and no matter how strong the futures are early in the morning, the next day, there should be some kind of a pullback. And the pullback should take the Dow, I use the Dow, even though it's based on other technical indicators, as, a, as a, my benchmark, and it should go negative at some point. Sometimes that negative is 100, 200 points down. Sometimes it just barely goes down. But what I said is, before there's a rally of substance, we should pull back. Well, we went just slightly negative by about three points at the opening. Then there was a rally. And now look at this. The S&P is down 0.92. The Dow's only up 16, struggling after yesterday to actually get follow through. And what I'd said in, my, in, my, in this overview section is that I have no other choice but to call this brand new leg A up in the Dow. I know that it just sounds ridiculous to be saying that this is a brand new buy mode that should take you an absolute minimum of seven days from now before you can get to a PD. Maximum I can go longer. My guess it takes us into late, into this, not next week, but probably the second week, maybe even late next week. But it takes us for about another, about a week to the upside. Now, it doesn't necessarily say you're going to get a proportional move. It also says that in the 120 minute chart, there's a real good chance that this is leg F and we'll make a peak F where you can have some, somewhat of, a, of a, um, a pullback. I also said today to subscribers that I'm anticipating that there's some kind of a doji candle today and that in today, tomorrow, we might even pop up a little bit, not take out the high of today and then pull back into Thursday, and then we'll see if options expiration, we have a spike to the upside. So this is a kind of complex scenario on the short term. But now here's the other thing. I also show this particular chart right here. You can see those beautiful one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if today's going to be another white candle. It looks to me like there's a good chance that it's, going to, it's, it's kind of struggling here, having hit 13,221, that we could start a bit of a pullback after five, actually six sessions of up moves. That's number one. So I also want to just real quickly, I've got here Apple chart. The 10-minute chart says that we've made a peak D. We've gapped up to a peak D. We're going sideways in a rectangle uh, formation. The stochastic and MACD are still holding pretty well, but the MACD, the arch of the MACD, sloping that yellow line, if you're looking at Tiger TV, and you'll be able to get this on an archive on Tiger TV 11, that big arch there can make it like what I call a dolphin uh, pattern by deflecting above. But if the yellow line starts to cross that red line, the fast-moving average starts to break below the slow-moving average, there's a real good chance that Apple will start to fill the gap. And we saw that with a gap up the uh, – whenever it was. I don't even remember. Was it yesterday? I'm not sure. There was a gap up. Yeah. And then I'd said – uh, I, I I thought that as long if that 56 round 560, no 556 round number low, uh, if that if Apple closed below it, that would indicate that Apple could actually start to slide. But instead, what happened? It went down. It, it barely went under that, and then it started to move higher. Now we've got another gap up, and something's telling me that I'm not sure that Apple can last about another seven to nine days if the, if the Dow is going to make a, a, a leg D, more significant top. But whatever I'm looking at here says to me that within the next week to two weeks, we could see a top that surprises on the downside, just as everyone's talking about that old high of 14,000. But it's not a major sell. It's just a real big surprise with a, a cumulative series of down moves. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it, but I haven't got any signals yet. So this is now based on many other things. Now, the other, other aspect that I want to talk about before I get to the numbers, 877-927-6648 is the number to call, is this. 120-minute chart in the E-minis, this is the June futures, um, has got this little double top to 1393.75. If the E-mini start to take out over the next hour or so, and the market's really struggling here, starts to take out 13, it's at 88. If it starts to take out 1385 to 83 key support, 
then I suspect that we have made, at least on a very short-term basis, some kind of give back of the big gains of yesterday, and we'll have to see what happens. In the meantime, the 10-minute the, the chart, as you can see, has gone in the sideways rectangle move. It's an amazing thing how long a rectangle can last, way longer than your patience, but I'm looking at this real closely to see how or if we pull back. Now, there are a couple of other things I need to talk about. I'm just first going to go through the numbers. Let me just run this down here. Okay. The Dow is up 9, the S&P, uh, up 9 to 13,187. Now, th uh, three years ago, when the Dow was hitting that 6,500 area, could you have even imagined if someone turned around and said, we will double the price of the Dow in three years to the day? Uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't have said that because I thought that uh, we would have to wait to see as we were moving along where the weakness starts to come in and how it unfolds after we get to, say, I thought even a peak C in the Dow, but we've gone in the monthly chart to a leg E to the upside. So you can always be surprised, but you always have to just do your work, put in your stops, do whatever you have to survive. The survival is the most important thing. Don't be, you know, people who are shorting Apple right now, you're going to be right at some point. But hopefully you have enough money left to be able to put that last short in that's going to make you money. So, you know, don't, don't be bravura. Don't, don't go for, tackle the most difficult thing. Uh, we've got seven rabbits, uh, nine, nine little doggies, and one tiger. What will I tackle? You know what I mean? Huh? Huh? Okay. So well, let's go through this. The volatility index. I've been talking about this for months. I'd said, first of all, that if the, if the volatility, and I spoke with Joan Boston on Monday, I believe it was, and I said, if the volatility index can break under 28, this is way back when we were in the 30s, and hold, it has to hold under 28, we could get to 12,500 in the Dow. Well, we kind of did that. But then the volatility index went in this pattern that I've been talking about for a while, this inverted V-shaped pattern. Lower and lower, and then it went under 20. Well, the left side, right side time price match from April of 2011 at 14.27 went all the way to 48 round number in November of uh, yeah, November of 2011. Pulled back, made a kind of a cup formation to 46.88, uh, and that was in uh, October, and then plunged, right shoulder failure is called, and it came plunging down with a number of dreaded H's, and the final dreaded H, lowercase, looks just like a lowercase H, went to yesterday's low of $13.99, or 13.99%. But here's the thing. It did it in one week before the left side, right side time price match. That says that we've still got about another week to go because it needs to close decisively under 14.27 for another aspect to take, take hold. At this point, there could be a bounce. I'll talk about that, and we'll go through other numbers that I want to look at as well as the TLT request from the den. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. Hey, love to take the calls. This is a great day for calls. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you seek to maximize your returns. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume and the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to a hundred dollars let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days go to the home page of tfnn.com and click on my name steve rhodes for your 30-day risk-free trial you are born to be a money master and i'll teach you how x story gold mines an nyse amex listed company trading under the symbol xg is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in argentina X Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's up eight. S&P's down two. Oh, I didn't finish the numbers. S&P's down two. Gold is down huge. Gold is down. The gold, GLD is down 243 at 159.87. You know, I just for subscribers say they asked about gold. I said, I see nothing there right now. And gold is down 49 at 16.45. We'll go into that if we can a little later on. High grade copper is down a little bit. It's at 3.85. But silver is down 91, 97 cents at 32.6. Uh, bonds are down 16.30 seconds. Now, this, this is really interesting. And the dollar is up 20 seconds, uh, 20 seconds, uh, 20 uh, cents at 80.41. One of my missing crude oil is down 76 at, uh, cents at 105.96. Now, I just had an email. Uh, Bill asks... Is the saying, when the VIX is low, it's time to go. When the VIX is high, it's time to buy. Is that correct? A hundred percent correct. That's the saying. That's not my saying, but that's the saying. That's the same as the saying that says, when the, uh, when the stochastic's above 80%, it's overbought. The implication being, whoa, be careful, it's overbought. I say, oh, baloney. When the, when the, when the, when the stochastic's above 80%, that's what you want. You want to be. You want that eighty percent plus to hold, hold, hold. The longer it can hold, the more your stock will not break down. I mean, that's just the way the history of it is. Breaks under eighty percent. So when the the VIX the VIX is low, let me show you. Here's a chart. You're looking at Tiger TV. Here's my monthly. Besides the fact that it's just incredible, that even a volatility index. Uh, this is just human emotion. Can be measured in um, can be measured in the Chapman wave. The last one being from the 9.39 low 
uh, on, in December of 2006, it went to a peak D at 89.53 in the bank crisis of October of 2008. So patterns don't change. Human nature doesn't change. Look at this. The, I remember discussing this on air over and over and over during this whole period of 2003 when the volatility index went into the teens and stayed there for one year, two years, three years, and only started breaking out in 2007, the year that the market made the major top. So, a major top, I should say, not the, but a. And, and then it went all the way to 89.53 from 9.39. So, no, I don't believe that at all. I think the volatility index holding low is telling you it isn't benign. It is saying that there is buying pressure. Rather put it into the, in my terms, rather put it into the explanationary uh, um, the, the, the way of transcribing what you see in front of you. And the facts are that you can stay low, that, trend, that the volatility index can stay low for a very long time. The history, though, is that in the last two years, whenever it's gone to the teens, it's only stayed there for one or two months, maybe three months, and then it spiraled higher. But as it got there, it stayed under 20, under 18, call it under 18 and a half, 19, for at least a couple of months. So, the, and look at the stochastics. Stochastics turning down in the monthly chart. MACD is still turning down. So, no, I, I say look at the chart, interpret the chart, don't interpret the, the emotions or sentiments that are expressed uh, verbatim. Okay, so that's that. Now, what I'd say is we need to go to TLT. The TLT has been in a down channel. Remember, I showed this the other day about a week or so ago. Actually, I've shown it before, but I only put in the lines about a week or so ago. And I said that in my work, it's called the, in the chapter where it's called the inside track. That inside track says besides a channel, within the channel from the top down, you can take maybe three sixteenths, just a thin little line. I usually make it a dashed line. I wanted to make it a nice big bright red line here to show that whenever there was a single leg A or B to the upside in the TLT, Going to 121.64, made the major top at 124.02, 90, uh, week of the 19th, no, on the 19th of December. Pulled back, it went up to 121.64 uh, on the 18th of January. Uh, no, it can't be. Oh, the 18th of, yeah, January of this year. Pulled back, bumped right against the line at 120.91. Lower highs. Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. That line is the repellent line. When it went there after the doji on the uh, 28th of Feb at 119.14, it plunged. Now where is it? It's on the 200 period exponential moving average. It is trying to find some support um, in the trough G slash C. And we're going to have to, and the stochastics are already down 15%. MACD is still looking pretty bad, so it's going to take a little time. I suspect that we are very close to a leg D up in the TBT. And the TBT right now is at 20.52 in a strong leg C from the most recent low of the 28th of February. For those of you who have taken my Master Traders course, um, uh, you know, you know how I look at dojis. So look at the dojis that have formed. Look at the one below, next to the one from the 28th of Feb, the one on the 27th. Very important. Hey, the Dow's up nine. S&P is down dollar ninety nine. I'll be back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six three. Now. I'm Hi, folks. Turns out my best student became my best teacher. Steve Rhodes absolutely raised my standards, and I'll guarantee he'll raise yards. Thanks, Tom. What I've learned is that if you want more, you must become more, and that transformation, folks, that occurs the moment you decide to become a master. Now, the quickest way to mastery is through immersion, and for two solid days in Denver, Boston, and Tampa, I'll create a new standard of wealth for those few trader investors who have a burning desire to succeed. At my Master Trader course, I'll teach you how to create the ultimate money machine. These are the best kept secrets in the business. Roadblocks, folks. Dabblers give up when they first appear. Stressors last just a little bit longer, but masters expect roadblocks and achieve extraordinary results when they bust right through them. I have all the benefit of knowing the type of wealth creation that I can generate for you. You don't. That's why I'm making this unconditional money back guarantee. If for any reason you're not satisfied with my master trader course, I'll refund every penny. That's right. I take all the risk and you get all the benefit. Go to the homepage at tfn.com and sign up today.
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at the Dow only up five, S&P's down 263. Now, in the TBT, Ultra Short Lehman 20-Year uh, Treasury Fund, uh, we're looking at a Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout formation to at least a PD. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll see it. And what that says, basically, is that in a left side, right side price time match, and I usually have certain candles, certain things that I do, that I use. Uh, it's really important that you, that you have and this part of it is one of the few things that I, I have a specific formula for the left side, right side price time match. But then I also have a little artistic um, a challenge where you have to use certain candles and certain aspects that are, to my eye, because I'm visual, I came to chart formations, etc., basically uh, as a, uh, um, a visual artist. So sometimes it's not really explainable. Most of the time it is, but there are occasional occasions where I, I just see it. It's clear as anything, but... It doesn't necessarily fit the mathematical formula that I like to use. But there is a left side, right side time price match, which went to um, three, 1530. That was yesterday. Um, that's 1530 the time. It's 330. And it broke out. And in this particular cup and ladle, Chapman Wave cup and ladle formation, in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave uh, uh, that is, uh, it's in the glossary, slide 461. I discussed this. And 
it you you can usually expect it's going to go to a D. When it gets to the D, you've got to be a little bit careful. But that only says on a 120-minute chart. The daily says it's in leg C with strong technicals, although the stochastic hasn't gone to is 80%, 79%. Leg C, I suppose I could call it E, but this is really a leg C. Is a cup and ladle breakout in the daily as well. That says I should expect a D in the daily. And then that should take us into the next couple of days. And then we're probably going to see a bounce in bonds. And maybe at that point we will get some a little deeper sell off in in the stocks uh, in the stock market. So let's go to our first caller. We got Louis in New Hampshire. Hi, Louis. How are you? Fine. How are you, Basil? Very well, thank you. Uh, uh, I'd like you to look at uh, TGA. Okay, now that's a small cap bear, uh, the three times bear fund. Are you are you in this position right now? No, I'm not. No. Okay, so uh, let me do this. On the 120-minute chart, TZA is a symbol. It's up 41 cents at 18.27. It's made a trough B. Well, it looks like it could be a trough B right now. It went, and this is a very interesting chart because the Chapman Wave, you can, you can do it. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. Whatever the vehicle is, it really makes no difference. It should, as long as it's not like when you go for a, an EKG where you've got just a, a, a um, certain strict parameters that it goes between, and it might break out one of the other ways. But in this case, an oscillator, we're looking at oscillators, uh, the price movement. Therefore, you want to go from a particular low bar and count the peaks to the upside in the Chapman wave. Well, this went on the 3rd of February at 18.17. In the 120-minute chart, it went to 19.61 on the 10th to peak E. It pulled back. But if you're looking at my work, you'll see that the fast, you know, people talk about all sorts of techniques. I just love this technique where the nine-period exponential moving average, the differential between the 26 and 12 in the MACD, held above the red line, the slow moving average. And it said that that peak E has to get a plus sign, not a down, uh, not a down arrow. Because of that, and then what happened, it went to the one extra peak, to peak F, on the 15th, and it pulled back. It pulled back. This is the last low. It was 18.17. It went down to 17.99 on the 17th of Feb. It made a really quick ABCD. Now, I'm, I've got my book that I'm making, and this book is just amazing. Uh, amazing for the amount of work I put in, that is. And it, does, it goes through all the chart patterns that I have. And on the very first one, I've got quick A to B. It could go C, uh, it could go E and F as well, but very quick, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and I have to differentiate when you know when Larry and and Tom and Steve, uh, when they talk about A to B equals C to D, this is something completely different. It's the simplest technique. All I'm doing is I'm counting each successively higher peak and giving them a successively higher alphabet letter, and it only goes to G, never an H. And in this case, it goes to an F. And it pulls back. It starts a very quick A, B, C, D. And after a very quick A, B, C, D, you've got ex not a major sell. You get a f sharp pullback. Well, that pulled back to a higher low with a doji on the 24th at 1830. Now it goes A, B, C, D, E. It goes to another F. And it stops right at a line that you could have just ignored. But I love to have it there because it's giving me very relevant information. And the doji candle high at peak F on the tw at 21.35 on the 6th of March hit the 200 period exponential moving average. And where did it go to? It went to a lower low to 17.76. And now the TZA is starting a little bit of a move up. The fact that the stochastics at 9.42 and not showing any strength, and there's no real price movement with it, says you've got to be a little bit careful because you want to see it close above the nine-period moving average of 18.46. So that's on the very short term. So it says, okay, here, here's a heads up. What, what would it take for this to really get going? So you had a question? No, no. Okay, so now this is the other thing. In the chap wave, it is really negative if you go to a peak C minus. In other words, you don't even have enough strength to get to a D, but you fail at a peak C minus. Well, in the daily chart, it went from the low of 17.99 all the way to peak C at 21.35 on the 6th of March. That's where it was peak F in the uh, 
120 minute chart. You see how you can use the overlapping time frame so nicely? Now what happens is it plunges and it makes a lower low. That says to me that the TZA, the small cap bear, is really struggling. Do you mind if I go to the IWM? Actually, it's a small cap. I don't, is it the IWM or is it the IWB? Would you know? I, IWM. Because the IWB is one, the 1,000, the Russell 1,000, and that's in leg B to the upside. The IWM is in leg B as well to the upside. Hmm. I'm going to discuss this because it's really important. I'm going to get into it a little, in, in a little bit more detail in terms of the projections and the techniques that I use. I'm going to make a suggestion. Because of the power of the breakout move yesterday, and as I was talking to, uh, with uh, Joe in Boston on, on uh, Monday, I was saying to him, I can't believe it, but there are signs that if there is a certain breakout pattern, if that occurs in the next, whatever, couple of days or a week, I have no choice but to say, wow, we have broken out, and that is extremely positive. So that's exactly the same thing that I would be looking at in the overall market. But the IWM has been one of the weaker indexes. So let me look at this and say to you, on the weekly chart, we've gone to a peak D, but we've held in a very contained move. There's a pattern that I call the falling axe in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. I, I explain it, and it's really this is a, it's, it's a, a, a descending cone or a wedge formation, like an expanding wedge, lower highs and much lower lows. And then as you break out the downtrend line, you've got to watch that closely. Now, that actually is uh, the, the, the falling, uh, falling axis in Chapter 24, slide 391. In my CD, this says that if the IWM takes out 83.31, the high of the 24th of February on the weekly chart, not only does it start a leg E to the upside, but if can you are you looking at, at my chart? Are you able to see Tiger TV? No, or? I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm okay. Not. Well, if you get a chance, try to see the archive of this because it's going to be really educational. If you look at the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. It's making the pattern that I was speaking about a little earlier, what I call the dolphin pattern. In other words, it doesn't cross below the red line. The fast-moving average is yellow, and the slow is red. Instead, it kind of deflects high. It makes like an M formation. That's very positive, and the histogram is still very strong. The MACD is at 88%. I would not be shorting the IWM yet. There will be a chance, but I don't see it just yet, and I'll explain why. For the IWM to break down, and it certainly could happen, but I would probably say I would even wait until it took out the low of this week, 81.05. If it closes under, let's call it 81. If it closes under 81, then 80.63 is the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart of the IWM. That is the iShares Russell 2000 Index Trust. It's minus 57 today at 82.47. But... If it starts to break out, in other words, if it gets to 83.30 and then 83.31 and then 83.32, I don't care if it even doesn't close there. The fact that it's broken out, this falling axe pattern is really, if you look at a chart, let me go to a weekly chart. I'll show you DuPont. Uh, was it DuPont? No, it wasn't. It was UTX. UTX has exactly the same thing, this falling axe formation. It only took four weeks, and it went from a peak C um, the week of the 17th of February, whap, right to leg D in the weekly chart. Now I'm going to go back to the IWM so folks can see. It's very similar to the chart pattern. I do not fight chart patterns. Not only that, the monthly chart is still very strong. So it's a very long answer to your question because I could have just simply said, I would not be shorting, unless you're talking intraday or something like that. Even intraday, I suspect it could pull back a little bit more based on the 120-minute chart. Let me just take that. Yeah, leg D up in the 120-minute chart. It's got support at 81, uh, 82.20 and then 81.89. So on a very short-term basis, yeah, I can see it pulling back maybe into tomorrow. But other than that, I and I could be so wrong about this, but I, I was... When I saw the move yesterday, I started looking at the bigger picture of my overall charts, and I'm saying to myself, wow, my Dow Quartet, GE, 
uh, which in my opening call we are long from back in beginning of December, is at 19.81, and it's for the first time touched the 200-period exponential moving average. But this seems to me a new leg A in the daily. So that's positive. IBM, another one of my Dow Quartet uh, indicator stocks, leg D up in the daily, leg C in the in the uh, weekly, and recycle to a new leg C in the in the monthly. New, uh, triple M. So I'm giving you this, this, this. These are chart patterns that I'm reading. I'm talking about the stocks, but I'm also talking about chart patterns. It looks like triple M is broken out in leg A in the daily, leg E in the weekly, and it's leg B in the in the monthly. And as I say, UTX just broke out. And that says to me that something awful has to happen in the next week for this to give back all the gains of yesterday and then to go to the lows of uh, the 6th of March. And I, 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 I might be wrong, but I suspect from your question that you were looking for kind of a, a not just a day trade, but a, a position play that would take you to maybe the next swing, right? Exactly, right. right. Okay, well, um, all I can say is it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And I don't have that right now. So I'm saying to you, I would stay away from shorting the IWM. There will be an opportunity. It might be in about a week or so, but I don't have it yet. And I'm talking about that bigger trade. You, you and I are looking at it as a bigger trade, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So I, ho I, I hope that satisfies your, your, your question. Now, let me just say, if I'm wrong, the way to do it is to start a small position if the IWM slides under 81.55 because that to me, that nine period moving average, if it breaks under that, would say, uh-oh, that's going to have a real tough time and then maybe you can start a small position. You do give up some, but I'm looking at this as if to say, if that was a move yesterday that's going to take us higher, it also tells you that Apple which looks to me like it's within a day or two of at least a pretty sharp pullback, that would say that Apple probably has a little bit further to go on the upside if I'm looking at the market with about 9 to 10 trading days to the upside. So right. I'd have a little patience, that's all. Right. Thank uh, you so much. You, Thank you very you much time? for the call. Uh, yeah, you got you a question? Have, do you have time for one more? Absolutely. Uh, EXM. EXM. Oops. EXM, wait, I've seen that before, EXM, oh, um, okay, yeah, oh, EXM, uh, uh, someone, someone brought it up recently, Excel Maritime Carriers Limited. That's right. Um, yeah, okay, I've got this somewhat notated, let me just have a look here. It's actually holding very nicely. Let me, now, I, <laughs> this is an example of the nine-period moving average acting as a, um, as a cable car to the downside. You know, I like to talk about it walking the nine period moving average to the upside. But on the downside, look, if you look at the monthly, it's unbelievable. It made, it ran up uh, in a peak. Is that an A? Let me just double check. 42, 91. I think it's a C. I'm not sure. But it went to 81.99. October of 2007, it had a little bit of a pullback. It pulled back to $3 in March of 2009, tried to rally, hit the 200 period moving average, and now the most recent low is at about 1.63. Hey, I think I'd like to do this. I'm going to take a little time on this because it is, is this shipping? Is this a shipping carrier? That's right, right, right. Great. Right. Let, me, let me do, I'll do that over the, over the break. We'll, we'll have a greater look at it. And as soon as we come back, I'll discuss it. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. 
Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed it at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York stock exchanges under the symbol GBG. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 11, S&P's down $1.69. And two things. One is, for those who saw the futures coming back strongly early this morning, must have thought, wow, we're going to have another. And, and Apple was up, and Apple's up huge now. And everyone must have thought, wow, we're going to have a huge day. That's the power of this trend index. It says, no, it's telling you that you're just too, too, um, that you are too, what do I say, exuberant right now. Um, and you, you need a little patience. That's number one. Number two, for the bears, they, they're not getting a chance. And for bulls who are wanting to buy, there are stocks that you could place orders in, they're not even close to pulling back to that number. But the day is young. Anything can happen between now and, say, tomorrow. So this is a very important period. Now, we've got, we've got Louis on the line from New Hampshire. He asked about the TZA. Now he's asking about EXM, which is XL Maritime Carriers Limited. Now, this is a very interesting chart because in the monthly chart, it is just a a perfect example of the nine-period exponential moving average being an absolute uh, barrier. 
for months, uh, years, no, years. And then when you get to the weekly chart, the weekly chart says um, terrible action, but I'm starting to flatten out. I'm trying to form a base, and a base is really important after a massive long move like this. This almost looks like UNG, that uh, natural gas fund. But the daily chart is starting to improve, and the 120-minute chart looks a lot like the daily, but actually is a little bit stronger and is saying that it's held the 200-period exponential moving our average of 1.77. Are you in this now, Louis? No, I'm not. I wish I was. Oh, you're not. So then I'm going to make a suggestion. After such an incredible smash to the downside of the monthly and then improving in the weekly, and the daily's already had a, a very strong move to a leg E, peak E, top at uh, 2.36 to 2.3, up 2.36, and now it's pulled back. It's had a really decent consolidation. I'm going to recommend that... Keep it as a small part of your portfolio because the history of this is lousy. So this is the first decent action that's had. It needs quickly to get to 1.93 to $2.10. And I'd say quickly, I'm talking about the next, the next three to five trading sessions. However, it's holding well. And I would say you start a small position now, and I mean a small position of your overall portfolio and a small position of whatever you wanted to put in, just to like a starter position, if it takes out 1.92, goes to 1.93, you can add just another tiny little part, but that, that part has to have a very tight stop, I'd say of 7 cents. Why? Because this is the move that has to start leg B and B strong. If the move that, if you, if you nibbled on it right now, if it broke under, uh, if it went to 1.73, that's 12 cents, I, I wouldn't even have such a big stop. But let's just say 1.73, I'd be out of it. I'd have a stop on 1.73. I don't want it to go back down and retest the 1.50s, the 1.40s. So a little starter position because it's acting quite well right now. And you can add a little bit as it breaks to the upside. And you keep your core, and you're going to absolutely promise me that if you get your core and a trading position, you'll, you will not take a loss on that core position. Because if it breaks that core entry point, you don't want any part of it. Okay? Got it. And keep it as a trade, and I'll tell you why. Because the trade could turn out to be a much longer-term position if it's able to get above 2.08 and hold. That'll be make an arch formation. Sorry, a cup formation that says, wow, I could tackle that bar, that ugly bar of the 15th going towards the 2.30s. Hope that helps you. It does. Thank you very much, Beth. Thank you very much. Now, folks, as we're about to wrap up, i got to tell you, I'm going back in history. I don't remember this many stocks in the 300s and 500s, even in the big, massive move of 2000. It was the high-tech sector. But this is all over the show, you've got stocks in the 300s and 500s. I'll talk about that on Friday. That, to me, is very unusual. So, parameters to watch. Dow breaks into 30,000, 230s. That's very positive. But I can see a little bit of a pullback. Are you